Greetings, me. Um, I'm just recording this video for me. Sometimes I gotta process because I don't, I don't got nobody else to process, so I gotta get it out of me just so I know what I'm walking through, you know. Um, and I, and part of it is like I feel hurt, you know. I'm in a season where. Man, a lot is going on. I know I'm getting fought, mentally attacked. Wow, mentally tired, you know? Um, yeah, while wow, mentally tired. I'm in a season where, you know, I, I talk, and I, let me just talk to God, Jesus. I feel like one day things were just kind of regular, struggle, struggle, but kind of regular to now they didn't one day it just felt like a, a door just slammed and like they're horrible and um and i felt alone before i remember being in my truck homeless sleeping in my truck i remember being in the rv cold I remember, I remember that, you know, feeling by myself. I remember crying a couple nights, you know. And and I, if I step back and I look back, I just feel like these last few years was just filled with so much pain, so much pain, and I just feel alone. And I know, Jesus, I know you are with me, and. There's just moments that it's hard to even feel that or know that or see that or, or taste that, you know? And, uh, you know, I'm walking through therapy for my eyes and my mind. And and be, from what I understand, because part of your mind, your brain is taken up with energy, trying to navigate life on in different, a different paradigm, I'll say. It sounds scary and it kind of is it's just then because your brain is tired other parts of your brain have to navigate life and it just comes across hard and frustrating and scary and, and I don't know why deep down inside I wish I had someone just to lean into and talk with and rest with and pray with and and I think I wonder if that homelessness feeling that orphan feeling that lost feeling like I know direction don't come from anyone but God I know that direction clarity peace joy don't come from anyone but God hope don't come from anyone but God I find myself deep down inside longing for real relationships. I, I go to a church right now that I love. Beautiful people, sweet people. But yet I still feel alone, you know, or lonely. And I, I think sometimes God just calls us to walk through. Jesus, You call. I think, I assume you call us to walk through things by ourselves. I remember I reached out to someone, you know, being vulnerable. I was like, you know, I'm, you know, I, it's just, if I'm honest, if I could be vulnerable, I just, it's been a long season. It's been a long, lonely one. You know, I'm just looking for brothers and, and, and sisters or to just, to link up with, to talk with, to be accountable with, you know, to do this life with. And, and I felt like the person kind of just, what they said was true, but a part of me wanted to take it. They said, well, you know, sometimes God just, he has to be the only one. He has to be the one, to, and I'm like, I think that's true, though. I agree. And another part of me, maybe immature, wanted to go. But it, is that really the truth, though? You can't just, I don't know. I just didn't like the answer. And not that the answer was wrong. It's just my heart was not in a place to want to hear. Oh, okay, continue being lonely. Essentially, you know, sprinkle some Jesus on it. It just kind of was hard. 
and and then people go i'm like man what do regular people do in these situations and you know i might look at i might look at my white friends who i love no no shade i love you my white friends i do there's no my uh, or just other friends how about that and one of them is like you know he lives with his family and i'm like oh that's dope you know wake up walk in the kitchen see mom and then you know and then brothers and sisters and nieces and i'm like that's so beautiful bro that's so awesome and i'm like yo if i look back at my life man i had friends turn on me and family that don't exist i got people in my family that just they don't they died they don't exist anymore you know and i'm like man jesus i think about how joseph probably how lonely he probably felt in egypt the Bible don't record Joseph having many friends, if any, right? How alone he felt in that pit, or how alone he felt when the uh, Midian knights grabbed his wrist and ushered him into slavery. How alone he felt walking from Canaan to Egypt. How alone he felt showing up at Potiphar's house, or how alone he felt having to run from Potiphar's wife, how alone Joseph felt going to prison or probably standing trial as a slave getting ready to die and then somehow not dying and that loneliness being extended, being extended into, well, here goes a dungeon, feel more lonely to feeling like maybe God turned on him, you know, and he kept the hope. So sometimes I bear with, I get that couple you know and what's been awesome is you know i think god has really been pruning relationships and and if i not to be extreme but i would probably go as far as to say i think god's been ripping things out and it's hard you know when you when it's time to renovate a field that you're gonna replant and you start ripping things up you're like man it, it didn't even it don't even look like you should plant something here you know um or like when it's time to, somebody said, a dilapidated building, an old beat up building, you know, they, they compared it to when we have thoughts in our heart and our mind that, that are contrary, like fear or our own rejection, our own abandonment. And those things begin to speak louder than God's will for our life. God has to tear it down like a dilapidated building. And how... When, like underneath it is probably this really hard soil, rocky soil, you know. And I would say a lot of a lot of rocks and stones are like minerals and calcium and all these different substances that compress into one. They congregate into one, kind of like the cares of this life start to just choke it down and become these hard clods. And uh, and and God has to not only tear down a building to re plant a new foundation he has to tear us down tear pieces in us down to build his kingdom and it hurts it sucks or like even the hard soil there's hard ground with clods but then there's also fallow ground hard ground is god has to till it it, it doesn't have much it's pretty just void and empty and hard and stubborn and it's just a reflection of us just choosing our own way. But then there's fallow ground. And fallow ground is land that's just been left there. Pretty much just forgotten. Pretty much untapped. It's really rich, you know. Year to year to year, whatever it's growing just grows and dies. And grows and dies and remineralizes. There's not people you know building houses on it and then letting that rot it's just fallow it's just untouched undisturbed and there's two types of ground there's probably many type of grounds in our heart jesus compared the kingdom of heaven to good seed cast among various types of ground and he goes yeah and stony stony ground thorny ground good ground, sandy ground, whatever it is, you know, and um, fallow ground is, hard ground represents us and our stubbornness, 
the fallow ground represents areas in us that are untapped, untapped potential. I think about family and friends and how you might see a family and we're a family of we're a family of doctors we're a family of drug dealers we're a family of basketball players we're a family of uh of barbers or painters or electricians or whatever or just our family is like we're caring our family that family across the street is stubborn you're gonna leave them alone stay away from them you know what i mean and, but unfallow ground is like regardless of what family you come from or the people you come from or the city or the whatever it may be on uh, fallow ground fallow ground is untapped potential things you didn't know were there undisturbed places and and sometimes god has to tear down limitations maybe gates and fences that make us feel safe to get us to areas in our life we didn't know we had access to we didn't know he sees it he sees this open field and goes you know what there could be a farm here. There could be a hut here. There could be a school here. There could be a, a orchard here, you know, you name it. Fallow ground is opportunity that the field has to be worked. The field has to be worked, but God sees what we don't see. God sees what we can be, even though our limitations are just really common commentary from other men. It's commentary from other, what is very common to the people around us. Scripture says, do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. To tap the unfallow areas in your heart, you can't be conformed You gotta be, to this world. You got to be open to the, to the will of God, to word of God, the voice of God. You got to be transformed. And so there's hard stony ground, maybe us, our stubbornness, our mistakes, the same habits we tend to make, same people we want to call, same phone people we want to reach to. I'm in the middle of a, a, a trial or a crisis or whatever. I don't even want to call it a crisis, but, and, and there's, I want, I just feel this urge to reach out and call somebody and be comforted. And then usually that ends up becoming something that's broken or perverted or, you know, or not innocent, you know? And, and yeah, not innocent, not righteous in God's sight at all. A mistake that leads to more mistakes, that leads to wasted time, that never yields itself to fallow ground. I think when God really wants to transform you, there's things he has to, he has to tear down your own habits. You have to deny yourself, you know. So, and going back, family, you know, loneliness. You know, yesterday or a few days ago, like on the weekends, what's been cool is, wow, feeling lonely. I've been trying to build a relationship with some family, you know, and it's been hard. It's been really hard. And uh, and so on the weekend, I'd be like, hey, come over. We're going to all, you know, hang out and be a family and a really long tumultuous relationship and and it's my mom is my mom and you know we ain't been a family since probably i was like 12 that's how long i feel like i've been that's how long i feel like i've been on this road just coming and going and you know ripping running running not even running the streets but to some degree just on my own to some degree you know and I'm like, yeah, let's, you know, let's hang out. And so we've been in this rhythm of, you know, I'll check in for, hey, you want to come over? You and my brother want to come over. We hang out this weekend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. I'll come pick you up. We'll buy food. We'll, you know, make food and hang out, chill. Probably go do something as a family, stuff like that. Just kind of building the beginning of something. And it's just been a, a handful of times that person has flaked. And, you know, and there's been a handful of times that person is flaked. But then, so this one time they're like, this last time she's like, yeah, yeah, let's hang out. Okay, cool. It's been like a month or however long it has been. I don't know. It's probably not a month, but it's been a minute, but sure, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll come. So I'll call you after school. I'm going to come pick you up. Da, 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 da. Cool. Um, 
And then, you know, the day comes and I'm calling and no answer. It's, if I call and immediately phone goes to this person is not accepting calls. This person is not accepting calls. And, and then I'm like, wow, okay, cool. I don't know what's happening. So I go back to, you know, I call again. My brother, I was like, did mom message? Did mom's, you know, phone number change? Uh, no, here it is. I, he sent me one. I called it. My other, my other phone. I got two phones on one phone. Calls and it's ringing and ringing and ringing. And all of a sudden, I'm like, "Yo, did she block me? Did she block me?" And it felt so rejected. I, that that feeling of abandonment and rejection just came, and I was like, "Man." And I'm I'm from times where like growing up, yo, I'm talking about from like kid elementary kindergarten like my mom would have random boyfriends or random dudes and and i'm like you know like she would choose those people over over me over us many times me and so it just it hurt you know like it's just a hard place to be you know in the middle of like and so i kind of like i feel like randomly one today i kind of put two and two together like yo maybe the sense of like wanting to lean into somebody and that hunger and that just want to be accepted. Maybe that comes from rejection of my mom. You know, when you just kind of have to have a female around, kind of have to maybe even abuse. Like you want somebody near, but you can't trust them. But you, but you just you know I can't live with them, but I can't live without them. I wonder if females go through that. I want a man, but I don't. I don't like men. You know what I mean? Type. I don't know, you know. I don't not like women either. That just don't get me wrong, but it's just something where it's just part of you is just like always aware, always aware, but not. But you kind of like I don't want. Anyways, I'm at church. I'm at men's Bible study, working on me, you know, trying to love Jesus. So I just I'm praying. I'm working. This is for me. This video is for me. I don't know if this is ever gonna make it to YouTube, but it's a hard season, man. It's a hard season. But God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful for sure. And uh, yeah, Jesus, I thank you. I don't know what's happening in my life, but I want to just bless your name and adore you. And um, yeah, I, I just want to worship you. I feel weak. I feel broken, but I needed I need you. And I, I assume you're breaking things down and letting them break, letting them die. But I believe you th use things like men's Bible study and church and and the relationships that do come when they come. Even, you know, I believe you use those things to build, um, to build your kingdom in me while other things are being teared down. So it's going to be OK. It's going to be all right. God is good. He's faithful.